Good morning, everyone. It's uh, Dave Weiner here. It's Thursday, June 7th, 2018. So I have been working on XMLR PC, which is 20 years old as of um, earlier this year. Some, you know, it was a process. So sometime in the last few months, 20 years ago, this thing happened. And, um, and so what I've got here is a new app. I want to do a demo of the difference between XML RPC and JSON RPC, which are very closely related things. So, anyway, so this is, uh, I'm calling a server called betty.scripting.com, which will eventually become betty.userland.com. Um, and then I'm calling, these are like canonical test uh, routines that you call. And, um, I click on the call button, and here, let's just change this to 23, and changes to Minnesota. So nothing really dramatic here. This is the call in XML, and this is the response. So now I just want to show you the difference between XML and JSON. So it's the same thing, basically. Um, and the difference is there, one is XML, the other is JSON. And it turns out that, yeah, the JSON version is tighter. And the reason basically is this. Here, let me go back and do the XML thing again to show you. See this thing here where it says int 23? This is something that I have to do in XML because... Uh, the type information cannot be inferred. Um, and you can see the return value here is a string, Minnesota. And there's not many types, uh, and there are structs and there are arrays. Like here, you want to see a struct? Let's give this 90, and I'll get an error, and that will have a struct. So you can see it gets more complicated, but let's go back to 8. So, and this is why, and as the calls get more complicated, the overhead for this gets higher. Whereas in JSON, you don't have to do that. Because it understands that this is a number 8. Because that's built into the JSON format, and this is a string because it's embedded in quotes, and again, that's a string constant. I don't need to put string around it because it comes in as a string. And uh, it's just the way it is. If you have a JSON interpreter around, which pretty much all languages have nowadays, then um, then this part is already done for you. The uh, numerical encoding, you know, not the, the value encoding, whatever type it is, it already knows. I'm beating a dead horse. So anyway, that's a little demo. Um, I'm uh, probably going to release this in the next couple of days. Yeah, probably sooner, actually. And this is all going to result in a new XML RPC site at some point. I'm going to do that very slowly off on the side. It'll be something called uh, reboot.xmlrpc.com. And... Uh, and uh, I'll just document the work that I'm doing, and if anybody else wants to work on compatible implementations in other languages, like Ruby or Swift or whatever have you, um, .NET, C, Python, that's a good one, PHP, these were some of the Java, I don't know if I said Java, um, and, uh, and all this is uh, open source, MIT licensed. So, in any case, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.